All right, folks, friends, welcome back to uh, Into the Cauldron, as we decided on episode two of the Fractional Reserve uh, miniseries. Uh, we're going to, uh, I should say, I'm going to, uh, you know, introduce uh, myself relative to uh, the name of the show, which is Into the Cauldron. And uh, yeah, that's funny to me, but I'm not going to go on a tangent. So, uh, Let's get started, we'll try to get through this as quickly as possible. I've got my little notes here to uh, help us along. Okay, so the third part. Okay, what we have here is, uh, it's a real world example. Um, the Federal Reserve, which is the uh, Central Bank of the United States, in response to the financial crisis uh, 10 years ago, uh, which kicked off uh, we'll say roughly 2008, uh, what they did is they went on an aggressive spree of buying treasury bills. And uh, so basically what I'm going to do is quickly explain what they did, and we're going to run through a few quick um, uh, scenarios that involve, uh, you know, the uh, kind of the money multiplier that we uh, went through in the last video and so ultimately we're going to see how much credit can be created from the initial credit that the Federal Reserve uh, creates. So basically what happens is this, uh, or this is what this is what really happened. At about the end of June, and I chose these numbers because they're just so much easier to deal with, at the end of June 2008 the Fed's balance sheet uh, eclipsed the $900 billion milestone, okay? And shortly thereafter, they began the, uh, the, the process called uh, QE or quantitative easing, which is just a clever way to say that they bought treasury bills. And the irony is treasury bills are also debt instruments. It's not like they were buying gold and they were essentially monetizing that debt, meaning they're literally, literally this is what happened. The federal government of the United States prints treasury bills, which are debt. They send them to the Federal Reserve and the Federal Reserve basically, I'm simplifying, but the Federal Reserve basically prints money out of nothing in exchange for those bonds and pushes that into the uh, real economy, so to speak. Okay, and so in June of 2008, they eclipsed 900 billion. That was what that was on the Fed's balance sheet. And by by January of 2015, their balance sheet sat at uh, 4,500 billion or 4.5 trillion. So that is a five-fold increase. Okay, so basically 3.6 trillion or 3,600 billion. Uh, dollars was created out of thin air, okay? And so real quickly, we're gonna run through the process of how credit is expanded and how the money supply grows. So that initial creation of credit, the uh, 3.6 trillion, or we'll just say uh, 3,600 billion, is deposited into bank number one. As we remember, there's the 10% rule, 360 billion is what they have to hold. So they're able to loan out 3,240 billion, which is then deposited in bank number two. Bank number two holds 324 billion. 2,916 billion is deposited into bank number three. And there's the amount they have to hold and there's the amount of credit they can create. So. Up here, what I did is, these are the deposits. When we add all these together, that's going to tell us how much credit was actually created through this process. So, as we remember, at the very, very beginning, the Fed monetized the debt, the Treasury bill debt, and created $3,600 billion out of thin air. That money was deposited into bank number two. So, bank number, from bank number two, or from whoever borrowed from the first bank, uh, the next deposit uh, is for $3,240. Uh, 
And then as you follow it down, this is, and remember folks, this is, this is the maximum that can be lended. Uh, this isn't to say that in each, in each of these scenarios, you know, where you have the initial uh, deposit, you know, this bank may only uh, lend out 50% of this, you know, 1,800 billion, or and they may just decide to hold half in reserves. That's, that's outside the scope of this discussion. This is just, we're just basically seeing the absolute maximum amount of credit that can be created or the process of getting to that maximum number. And so basically, through uh, the money multiplier, we find that these are the amounts of deposits that can be made. And you've got the 3,600, 3,240, 2,916, and 2,624. All of this was basically created out of thin air for a total amount of $12.38 trillion. And that is just through basically four deposits or four, four of our little cycles that we've uh, illustrated in the past videos. And so if you follow this to its logical end, I, I, I believe the, the, the final number is this number multiplied by almost, almost 10. And so that's the uh, maximum amount of credit that can be created uh, from just this, this number right here. Okay, and so for this first video, this was basically all I wanted to get across. Uh, hopefully it made sense. And uh, next time I believe I'm gonna talk about something related to uh, corporations borrowing money and stock buybacks and all that fun stuff. But uh, stay tuned, we'll see what, uh, what comes along. Okay, bye.